Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host Lucas and we're back here today starting off another build and review series. This time we're going to be doing uh, a, something a little bit weird. I'm calling it the Cyclops Mia build. Uh, basically it's just it was this idea that I had that I wanted to build a pod around the Mia and it was a way for me to practice my uh, uh, what I was learning about 3D printers and uh, what I was learning about Fusion 360 and stuff like that. So I just wanted to experiment and I came up with this thing and it actually worked out pretty well. Uh, I can show you guys here actually what it's gonna look like so this here is the Cyclops Mia build that I've been working on and uh, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about how I got to this so uh, basically I was trying a few different things I wanted to like um, well, my first idea was to actually do an inverted Mia build where the battery was gonna go on top that didn't work out because uh, the clearance for the props is really not big enough even with the TPU bits and bobs that I that I came up with it didn't quite work out so I abandoned that idea pretty quickly and I started playing around with just some camera mounts and what I really wanted to do was get a, a camera mount situation where the uh, HD camera and the, uh, the SD camera were very very close together so that I would get more one to one um, ratio between what I was seeing on my camera on the goggles and what I was getting on HD. So uh, that's how sort of how this pod came together. I made a few iterations of it where I uh, tried different things and uh, for example the first iteration didn't have this uh, lip over here which protects the lens and also uh, gives it a resting place and uh, keeps it at a 45 degree angle so this is a going to be a 45 degree angle pod. Uh, I'm actually going to give you guys uh, access to the uh, STL file so if you want to download and print it out yourself and try it out on your Mia, go for it. So I'm calling this the Cyclops Mia because it kind of looks like a Cyclops flying at you like that. And uh, it still retains the top plate from the regular Mia and uh, uses that as a way to like beef up the build and keep it nice and sturdy. But uh, drop down to 10 millimeter uh, standoffs right here as you can see, very, very short standoffs. And I'm using uh, an AIO PDB type board. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about the components that we're going to be using on this build. So I guess first we'll talk about the pod. Uh, this is a TPU 3D printed pod. I 3D printed it myself uh, here. Uh, this is the fifth iteration, I think, and it includes a channel right here so that you can run a strap around and put your camera right on top here. Uh, 45 degree camera angle, and it does have a screw hole so that you can like put it in nice and secure. It is printed out of TPU with a bit of an infill, so it has quite a bit of give, and it, it does really, really well on crashes. Uh, I've been testing that other unit there for a few weeks now, crashed it a lot and it's held up great, including gates, uh, all sorts of stuff, no problem at all. So uh, the frame we're gonna be using is the Mia X. This is a, a frame that's been around for a while. It isn't expensive and that's the reason why I picked it. I wanted something very cheap for me to experiment with and that I could get a few units at a very, very discounted price. So I managed to get four of these from Beaver FPV at a very, very cheap discounted rate, which is freaking awesome. Um, <clears throat> And uh, it's a strong enough frame. It's nice and compact. It's a true X, but I I am liking the true X. I, I really honestly like. I find that switching back and forth between true X and stretch X, I really don't notice that much of a difference. Once they're tuned in and they're really locked in, they kind of all feel sort of the same. I uh, um, I guess sometimes I feel like the stretch X corner is a little bit better, but I don't know. I raced all weekend long with a, a regular X, so I have no problem with it. As long as it flies and it's locked in, it's going to be awesome. So uh, the only other modification I made to the frame is right here. I, uh, I cut this out. Uh, I did four of them at a time because I was going to actually put the camera here upside down. So I needed some room for the camera to be able to poke up. But uh, yeah, uh, it didn't work out, but uh, I left it there. It cuts a tiny amount of weight off. And I guess I could shave it all the way back to here if I really wanted to, but I'm gonna leave it alone like that. I'm not gonna worry about it because that's just a lot more work to remove all this carbon here and I don't have a really good way to do it. This was done with a, just like a Dremel essentially and that took forever. We're still gonna be using the Mia top plate. I'm gonna be drilling a hole here to run some wiring. I'll show you guys later how it is. It is not necessarily the most uh, maintenance friendly, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't really care. I can deal with it. It's not a problem for me. So you guys will see that in the build as well. We're going to be using 10 millimeter standoffs to keep this thing up here. And then the pod is going to go on top and uh, it's all going to screw down and it's actually going to be a very nice and uh, beefy setup. All right. So we covered a frame, nothing really special there, just a Mi X. Let's talk a little bit about the flight controller we're going to be using. So uh, this here was given to me courtesy of uh, Beaver FPV. So make sure you guys go check out beaverfpv.com. These guys are great to deal with. They have great service, great shipping, and uh, all around great people to deal with. And uh, they're good friends of the channel. They help me out with a lot of stuff. They help me out with technical questions, and uh, they show they send me stuff so that I can bring it to you guys. So uh, yeah, go check them out because they're awesome. 
So anyway, back to the, the flight controller here that I was talking about. It is the CL Racing F4. So these guys are somewhat new on the market. I haven't seen too much stuff from them, except for like, uh, I actually tested out one of their batteries, their 1600s. Uh, they're actually pretty amazing. They weigh about as much as a 1300 uh, milliamp battery does, but uh, they pack a lot of a punch. Uh, I was able to get, uh, it felt just really nice. It felt almost like a, a souped up Bonka Graphene. It was, it was really nice. It delivered full 11 laps on UTT4. Uh, with me like really giving her as hard as I could. So I'm interested to see what they bring in terms of an FC. So this is an F4 FC, it includes uh, pads and it's in, in built-in PDB up to 160 amps, which means that you can totally run uh, two to six S on this thing, no problem. It has uh, ESC pads for the for the um, for power and for signal around the sides. It does come with a stack here for the OSD, so it has built-in OSD for BF uh, for Betaflight. It has a current sensor, so it'll be able to give you current readings and uh, voltage readings. And it has a spot here for you to put a SIM card right away and get a black box if you want. Uh, some of the other neat features that this thing has here too are the built-in buzzer. However, I was reading about it on their manual and uh, the built-in buzzer is not currently working. Uh, most of the features in F4s and F7s will be fully fleshed out and fully working by the time that Betaflight 3.2 comes out. And uh, as you've seen on the channel, I've tried out Betaflight 3.2. It's pretty close to ready. It flies really, really nicely. However, some of the features aren't quite there. Like. Uh, Certain SBUS inversions in some ports and in some boards are not quite there. And uh, these guys are very specific about where you should put your SBUS. So there's a nice little pad there for SBUS, marks everything else for you. There's uh, patches for your camera. There is, oh, sorry. There is a 1.5 BEC for, uh, sorry, a 5 volt, 1.5 amp BEC, and a 7.7 .7 volt, 1.5 amp BEC as well. So you can run your camera and your VTX off this thing, no problem, which is what we're going to end up doing as well. Um, let's see what else. Uh, this does use the MPU 6000 gyro, which we've come to know and love. It's a nice low uh, low noise gyro, and uh, I've I've used it in many many builds, so I know this is going to be solid. And then I know that the added performance of that four will allow me to run some pretty nice pit loops and uh, get this thing nicely tuned. Um, I might end up drilling out a little bit more to be able to get uh, some gummies or something like that, but it'll definitely be soft mounted at least with bobbins or something like that because uh, my experience with F4s is that, or even F3s, is that they really like to be soft mounted. You get the best uh, performance and the best tune out of these guys. Um, other than that, nothing too remarkable about the board except for the price is pretty nice. I think they're about $40, which is quite good for an F4, especially one that has a PDB and OSD, everything built in. Uh, so we'll get to see the quality of life and how well this thing lasts once we put it on, but um, so far well, the quality looks good, it's well marked, uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. We'll be looking at it in more detail when we go to wire it up in the next episode of the series. Um, so from there we are going to be using the uh, DYS XSD 30 amp ESCs. We've used this in previous builds before. It's a nice 30 amp ESC. DYS makes really really nice dependable ESCs, I've never had problems with them. Most of the time we're a burnt one, it was due to a prop strike anyway. Uh, these ones here run D-Shot up to 600, I believe, which is great, and uh, I don't know, I just, I like D-Shot because I don't have to calibrate, and uh, I seem to have a really easy time tuning that, especially with higher PID loops. So, uh, that's going to be a nice combo with this F4, I'm quite sure. The motors are also nothing special because a part of the the way I wanted to make this build is to make it pretty inexpensive and with components that I could source easily so that I could use this as a test bed for different things and so that I could crash it and uh, really push it to the limit. So uh, part of the, what I got there are the DYS-2205-2550 KV motors, which I'm actually liking a lot with the Cyclone, uh, the Dow 5050 Cyclone Biblades. These motors are great with those, like uh, especially with the weight that this comes under. Uh, really, really nice. So we'll be using these guys on the build here with the ESCs and this flight controller. And uh, that pretty much gives us our drivetrain. Uh, in terms of video, we're going to be using the trusty HS1177 that we, I've used on literally every build you guys have seen here pretty much with the 1.8 uh, mill uh, millimeter lens, which is my preferred field of view. I like a really, really nice wide field of view. Uh, so we'll be using this guy and uh, we'll also be using the ATX-03 which is basically the same as the VTX-03 except it carries audio which I don't particularly really care about because uh, I don't use audio anyway but it's what I could source on hand. I'm really really liking the VTX-03s and the ATX-03s. These things are pretty nice especially for races where you don't really need a huge amount of range. However these do put out a pretty decent amount of 200 milliwatt. 
Um, so overall, awesome, especially because they come in a set of small form factors, so it's going to fit nicely underneath there, and it's going to be nice and hidden, and uh, easy to access, easy to change channels, and it weighs nothing. And also, it's about half the price of most VTXs, so I really, really uh, recommend the VTX-03, even with the dipole, or you can put yourself uh, an Axie or something like that and just replace the UFL. Uh, so endless possibilities with this guy and uh, at a very very inexpensive cheap price, which is awesome For the radio we're gonna be using the usual R6 DS or R9 DS Which is the decapped version of the R9 D uh, just a regular S bus uh, with the dipole antenna I've used this in every build I run radio link and uh, it works really well for me um, We're also going to be using some of the RTFQ uh, LEDs. These are like bright as freaking suns and uh, just as like a nice little touch to have. I wanted to kind of have it like under here, but uh, I don't think it's gonna be possible. It's not gonna fit. I didn't quite design with design this with these in mind, but it would be kind of neat because uh, this is some clear TPU. So when it lights up, it lights up pretty nicely throughout, but uh, no big deal. So we'll be using these guys as well. We'll be using the soft mounts. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the components that we're gonna be using on this weird uh, Cyclops Mia build. So yeah guys, that pretty much covers it for the components that we're gonna be using on this build. Um, Hope you guys subscribe to the channel because we're going to be doing a full build hands-on from start to finish with these components that I just showed you guys. And then we're going to be doing the tuning as well, so you don't want to miss any of that. And uh, we'll be having, um, I'm also still waiting for, uh, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the next build. I put it out to the community. What did you guys want to see in terms of uh, a next build, maybe something different that you haven't seen yet? Uh, I got some ideas thrown at me uh, at the FPV chat and a couple comments, but uh, I'm still kind of on the lookout. So if you still have some ideas, uh, throw them in the comments below and I'll consider those as well. And uh, try to see if I can source one of those frames to do to build for you guys. One of the ones that I was kind of thinking of was uh, the Kraken. So let me guys, uh, let me know what you guys think of that frame. Uh, so yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the the show today. I hope you learned something, and uh, I'll catch you guys next.